So good evening, everyone. I hope everyone has joined the meeting. So today's session, KYC, uh, it's all about your child. So kids are the most delightful people on the planet and the budding adults who naturally possess creativity and passion. So today's entire session, we'll be focusing on how to know the child better, what can be done to know your child better, what are their abilities, what are the difficulties they are facing. So I am Varsha Sharat. I'm a speech language pathologist at Lorem. Today, major of the session, the first half, I'll be handling. So KYC, this workshop is to address whatever issues your child is facing or what is affecting them, say from zero to eight years of age, and how as a parent or as a teacher, you can handle the same. So here, we're providing a platform so as to identify the hidden talents and also the passion of your child. And what we aim is to train you guys to identify the disability. So whenever you see a red flag, you know that you're supposed to contact a professional or how long should you wait before contacting a professional. So this workshop will help you understand your kid better in terms of discovering what is the root cause of the problem, the behavioral pattern. So most often we have uh, parents walking in and saying the sudden change in a behavior or we don't know why there is an unacceptable behavior. Why is there a behavior that's disturbing us? So in short, this KYC series is to give the parents the tool they need to skillfully nurture the child. And now let's try to answer why is KYC limited just to zero to eight years of age and why just this population? Now this graph, why early education is so important. If you can see till 18 years, we have given the development, majorly the brain development, so what happens here is until four years of age, we have a 50% of brain development that's happening. And by eight years, what we assume is that 80% of the development takes place. Since it's a very critical period, the young age, like we say, zero to three years is a very critical period in the overall development of the child, be it their speech, be it motor, be it cognitive, and so for early education too. So as the brain research suggests, all of the brain development, that is 80% happens from birth to eight years of age. Now that we have seen, why do we have to know? We also have to know the power of a brain. So as a parent or a teacher, we need to know how does the brain function? So how is our brain or a child's brain working differently? So what are the factors that we need to know? So ask a carpenter and he says, you need to know the wood before you chisel it. And so you ask a farmer and he says, you need to know the soil before you sow the seed. So as a parent or a teacher, what do we need to do? We need to know the power of a brain. So before sowing the seed of knowledge as a teacher or as a parent or as a primary caregiver, we need to know what is your child good in? So what is the ability of the child? You need to know the brain. So exactly why the next part, what we're going to see is about our brain. So to know our brain better. So all of us mostly know that we have trillions of brain cells and they're called neurons and 20,000 possible connections between these neurons. Three major topics to be covered are what are the multiple intelligence? What are the eight intelligence? And why do we need to know them? The three basic learning modes, be it the visual, auditory, or the kinesthetic. And the two parts of brain. So we might know that brain does have two parts, the left and the right, but we might not know why and what is responsible for each of our actions. So what does the left brain do? What does the right brain do? So that's what we're going to see. So starting with why is shaping our brain or maximizing it for learning important? The first picture that you can see here is an unstimulated brain and the second a stimulated. So more the learning experience, wider the knowledge, everything that can be seen in the second image, that is a richer network of pathway can be seen in the stimulated brain. So similarly, what research suggests is that brain connections are nothing but your life experiences and the learning of a child. So whatever the learning a child gets, the brain's connections strengthen depending on that. So more learning and a wider experience can help the child to develop more and more pathways that can decide their intelligence. Moving on. So I did tell you the two parts of brain, be it the left or the right brain. So like we all know, the left brain majorly is going to cater to all your communication needs, be it your logic, math, language, science, strategy, planning. So all of our communication, thinking, be it problem solving, all of it is based on the left brain. Whereas the right brain does the most colorful part of the job. That is creativity, imagination, arts, 
be it music, visualization, all of it is catered to by the right brain. Now, now that we know both the sides of brain, that is the left and the right brain, we also need to know how can we stimulate both the sides of brain at the same time. So I'm going to introduce you to something new called the alphabet doodling. So here in this video, you'll be able to see the doodling video as we have been showing here. And it's performed by late artists popularly known as Khartoum and Badusha.
So what we saw now was a doodling video. Uh, moving on, what we'd have seen here is stimulating both our brains, that is the left and the right brain simultaneously. Now, why do we consider mental development or brain development very important? What we usually assume is that the physical development precedes the mental development. That is all of our children who go, go through the childhood. First, what happens is physical and then we move on to the mental development. But that's not the case. So an important graph was physical development happens. So if you see this graph where we have the development and age in years, what we can see is by two years of age, almost 30% of the development takes place. Whereas by four years of age, 50% of the development takes place. And what research suggests is also the same, that more of the mental development happens and then the physical development. Now, another set of vital information, like, like I said, the eight intelligences, that is the multiple intelligence. And you will know why we need to know why, what are the multiple intelligences. So the first being the naturalist, logical, musical, linguistic, interpersonal, intrapersonal, bodily, and visual. So what we exactly need to know here is, how is this multiple intelligence associated to our real life? Or how can we see this in our children? So there are two examples for us. The first being Mr. Yes. We'll take examples of a child. So most of you would have recognized who is this in the picture. But this child was recognized at a very early stage as a very good cricketer. But what happened was a long story, which unwinds like the school's um, teacher, that is a PE teacher or the school coach was able to identify the visual and spatial abilities of this particular child. And what happened was that it led him to become a very good cricketer. So what we have emphasizing here is that he's a prolific run scorer from just to a normal leg spinner. He was, go, uh, he was able to reach that particular level. And why did that happen? Associating with our multiple intelligence, he was very good with visual and spatial intelligence. And be it bodily or kinesthetic, he was very good in both of them. So he was able to become a star that he is today. Similar is the condition with Mr. N. So here what we see is he's a very good orator and impeccable uh, oratory skills he has and PR skills. So here what we are focusing is his interpersonal skills. How, is, how well does he interact with others? And because of these skills, he was able to become a very good leader, a leader who's able to maintain relationship within the country and also between the countries. So all of these cases, what we are focusing is that there was a person to identify their talents, be it any talent, not that they were qualified or uh, very much talented in all the sectors, but to one particular intelligence, just because they were able to identify, not that they were aware that this is particularly multiple intelligence or that he's a naturalist or a wish was spatial. They didn't know that, but they were able to identify the child for his ability and not for what he was not able to do. And just because they were able to do that, we got two influential people from our country that is none other than Sachin Dendulkar. We all know Sachin Dendulkar. And also our Honorable Prime Minister, Mr. Narendra Modi ji. So what I'm exactly uh, highlighting here is that both of these multiple intelligences are very important to know as a parent or a caregiver. So in detail, when you see, the first is verbal and linguistic intelligence. So what do we refer to as verbal or linguistic intelligence? The ability to have a very well-developed verbal skill be it in any sector, maybe to the sense to be to sounds, to finding a rhythm with words. And throughout this multiple intelligence, what we're going to see is what are the skills that each of us has and what are the careers that we need to choose in order to be successful. So in this verbal and linguistic, the skills we focus are listening, speaking, writing, and teaching. Whereas the career options can be being a poet, being a journalist, or being a writer, teacher, lawyer, or a politician. Moving on, the next one is to be a mathematical or a logical intelligence. Having a mathematical or logical. So what does this mean? It's the ability to think conceptually, maybe very good at problem solving. Maybe they do all the logical reasoning in a better way than the others. So all of these intelligence signify that they one of the intelligence overpower another in a particular individual. So the skills 
like I said, is problem solving. And the career options can be being a scientist to an engineer, to being an accountant or a mathematician. So moving on, the third is the musical intelligence. We might feel not all of us has a musical intelligence or a touch of it. But what I say is intelligence is nothing to do with that, but it's the ability to produce or appreciate the rhythm, pitch and timbre. So skills, what we focus here is mostly to do with singing, playing an instrument or composing or music. And career options, like we can always guess, being a musician, a disco jockey, a singer or a composer. So the next intelligence that we are going to speak about is mostly to do with the visuospatial intelligence. So like I said, an example for a cricketer, the ability to visualize or picturize accurately and abstractly, that's mostly to do with visual and spatial intelligence. So the skills we focus here, the ability to do puzzle building or painting from designing to fixing objects and the career options to flourish will be to become a sculptor or an artist, an inventor, whatever is given here, mostly focusing on sports stars. The next is bodily and kinesthetic intelligence. So what we refer here is the ability to control one's own body movements to handle it skillfully. So the skills are dancing, sports, hands-on experiments, acting. So naturally the career options will be to become an athlete, a PE teacher, a dancer, actor, or a firefighter. So the very important intelligence that is the interpersonal intelligence. So the capacity to detect. So in case uh, you are a salesperson or a politician to know what exactly is the other person wanting? What do they want from us? And depending on their moods or desires, we change the way we speak. So that's also an ability. So the skills is to see from another person's perspective, be it empathy, counseling, and the career options would be to become a counselor, be it a salesperson or a politician or become a business person and ministers. We know how much of an interpersonal intelligence they all have. So the next is the intrapersonal intelligence. So different to that of interpersonal intelligence, intrapersonal intelligence is the capacity to be self-aware, to know from within, that is, to analyze your inner feelings, to know what you believe in, your thought process. And the skills naturally is to recognize one's own strength, weakness, reflect on them. So always a career option for these people will be to become a researcher, a theorist, a philosopher, or a conceptualizer. So the last intelligence, what we're gonna see is about being a naturalist. So naturalist is all about the ability to recognize, to categorize, maybe a plant or animal and associated with our daily life. So the skills here is to maintain a connection with the nature. So most often we don't know how many of our children are able to explore the environment or how like we used to interact with the environment, but that's also an intelligence. So the career option is to be a naturalist, uh, be a life scientist, a landscape architect. So we saw what are the multiple intelligence. So how do we teach our children? So we know all of the children are not same. Every child is unique and there is a way to teach them. So most of all parents, when um, talking about learning or how to teach the child, we see about how the different modes of learning is going to be helpful. So they say most of, my, uh, most of the time I teach my child, but they're not able to learn. Or I give a lot of revisions for my child, but he forgets by the time exam comes. Or maybe whatever I say, he's not able to understand. I need to repeat it multiple times. So a reason to why this happens is because we are not aware of the three modes of learning and how each child's mode of learning is different. Now, three modes of learning means being a visual, auditory, or a kinesthetic learner. So it's all about being seeing, hearing, and doing. Academically, we can also add one more, which is the verbal, reading, and writing both together. Now, catering to a visual child is completely different from auditory and audit for an auditory, completely different from kinesthetic. So what is a visual child? You give him a word, then he should be able to recognize it. Um, maybe the spellings and all of it. But a visual child just does a sight word reading. So just by seeing a word, he can say, okay, this is a bus. Not necessarily does he know the sounds B, U or S, but he just memorizes with a picture in his mind. So he might forget the name, but he takes notes, he remembers faces, makes lists. So most of his communication is expressed through emotions and facial expression. So how do you teach a visual child? So how do you teach a visual learner? It's simple. So just make most of your learning 
through a board or maybe pictures maybe give them flow charts or can be images whenever you teach a concept make sure they have a visual image in front of them so if you try to make them learn by just auditorily telling them explaining them multiple times it's not going to work for them so how do you cater to auditory child so an auditory child is necessarily someone who learns best when they're reading out aloud or remembering things only when better when it's through auditory modality so mostly if you see uh, when we take class uh, maybe in a classroom setup we teach them something most of the children they might need extra revisions they might need extra learning but when you see auditory learners it's okay if they concentrate in the class then the rest of the time they don't have to learn so they just give exams and they're good at it so we often wonder why are they just able to just listen and then reciprocate in an exam so the reason is this they just need to hear what you're saying they just need to concentrate once when things are being taught in class so how do you cater to a auditory child so you give them a lot of reading activities maybe to listen uh, to a voice over now to a doing learner so most often what we uh, take it for granted is that a kinesthetic learner can be hyperactive or he's not doing something which is normally acceptable it's because we don't know there's a third mode of learning which is by doing so most of these children expect that they want to learn by real life experience or they want to touch something they want to sense something and then learn so trying to teach them through real life situations can be really helpful for kinesthetic learners so kinesthetic is mostly when they enjoy touching or doing things maybe when they are happy the kinesthetic jump with joy when angry they become moody so most of it should be an educational game or an interactive activity which will facilitate more for a doing learner so these were the three modes of learning now we know what are the three modes of learning but we need to know how do we remember better so as research suggests 90% of what we remember or we can retain is when we say or do an activity so if you take a minute and think of any new concept or maybe a new recipe that you're going to learn be it a teacher or a parent we learn it better when we do it ourselves when we try it on step by step even if someone tells you like 100 times the same recipe if someone shows you the video 100 times you're not going to learn it better but the moment you start doing it and you also hear it so there is a practice happening there so you do it and you learn better similar as the graph that suggest here a learning pyramid where they say 10% of what we read is only what we retain but 90% of what we say and do is what we retain now we saw what are multiple intelligence we also saw what are three modes of learning and we also saw what's learning pyramid so moving on three modes of learning seeing hearing and doing we come to the second portion where it's the parent child interaction so know your child means spend more time with your child get to know them better so how do you spend more time with your child so that's what we refer to as a parent and child interaction which is very very crucial for a child's development and why is it development it's because not only do the parents influence the speech behavior cognitive motor development but the overall development is also based on how much of interaction is happening between a parent and a child so parents are the first role models for a children so how do they learn they learn by observing us by imitating us so any of our habits maybe the way we eat maybe the way we speak the behavior habits all of it is influenced from the parents for a child so we need to be very careful when we are speaking or we are doing something because most of their learning happens through observing us or imitating us now as a parent what can you do so the three main things that you can do is to observe your child through all times so the children i'm referring to here is from 0 to 6 and usually what we forget to do is to respond and acknowledge a child say one year old or a two year old because there's no much of communication happening between the parent and child so what we must do we must play with them we must observe and also acknowledge the child so how do we do this so we let them explore the surroundings we explore their abilities and we can also identify the difficulty so as you can see here what majorly helps is to play with the environment so as we know we don't have much of interaction with the environment considering the covid situation but still what enhances their exploring abilities is to when we allow them to play with mud or water if we take them out for a walk maybe to a park any place where there are more children and what do we need to do there 
we need to describe each and every activity that's happening around us, be it an object, be it a thing, whatever it is. It's a vehicle, the colors, everything. So the main thing as a parent that you need to do is to build a curiosity among them, to know more, to learn more. But if you ask me how, how do we decide what is better for the child? How do we decide what is he interested in? So as you know, we cannot decide for them. So what we need to do, we need to expose them to all kinds of hobbies and activities before we make a decision, what is good for them? Do they like to swim? Do they like art? Do they like dance? Rather than putting in them something and then saying, okay, fine, he doesn't like it. First, let them explore what they want and then choose what they want to do. Now, we saw what are the activities to be done. Another major thing that we need to see is the red flag areas. So the red flag areas is what we need to observe in a child, maybe during your play or when you interact with them. Red flag necessary doesn't mean an alarming situation, but some things that as a parent or a caregiver that we need to notice. And you also can note the green flags. Now, the development of a child has various sectors, maybe a speech development, maybe motor, maybe cognitive. So at a one year of age, what can you expect them from them for a speech development? We often look at reaction to sound. It can be a cooker whistle. It can be a reaction to a television, but there must be a reaction. Or are there no babbling from the child? The babbling can be any vocalization, sounds, playful utterances, bubba burger, anything that the child does. Or is there any imitation? Are they doing an imitation properly? Or is it just gestural what they're doing and very minimal? So all of this is some red flag that we notice by one year of age. By two years of age, what do we no need to notice? Are they only trying to communicate through gestures? Is there no word utterances? Because ideally by two years of age, there should be a two word utterance. That is, if they have to ask for something, they have to ask water, give or give water. There are two word utterances. But if there is no first word and they have a difficulty to follow an instruction, all of this can be considered as a red flag. By three years of age, what we need to focus is, are they communicating to us through verbal? Are they only gestural? Are they using speech? Is there clarity of speech? Do they have difficulty naming an object? So are they able to follow the commands? Like I said, at two years of age. The next, what we're seeing here is the journey of your child, be it from six months to that of four years. So what all should happen? Like I said, from one to two years and three, we have seen what happens in the first slide. Now, what extra do we need to see? By one year of age is when the child starts walking and exploring the environment. And necessarily at that time, their vocabulary increases. There's a spurt of words. So they're able to name the common objects, the family members, everything related to that. And by three years of age is when we expect an interaction with the outside world, the children. That's when we put them for play school. So all of this development is something that you need to see and be cautious about. Now, like I said, it's not necessarily that all children go through the same milestone. There can be some delays too. But there are some play activities that you can do at home to identify these red flags. So play is simplest, like you know. It's most effective also to bond with your child. So what are the five activities that can help you bond with your child in a better way? So we all say, uh, what are the toys that we need to buy? We are more concerned about maybe this is not the toy for the age or what do we use? But the five activities that I'm going to suggest now are all something that you can do at your home. And another thing is that these are just examples. So necessarily doesn't mean that if a child is not performing one activity, it means no, he has a red flag. It might be that he's not interested. So what I suggest is you mold the activity based on the interest of your child. So whatever his interest is. Moving on to the activities. So the first activity, which you can start by 1.5 to 4 years, maybe, matching objects to pictures. So as you can see in this picture, we already draw the objects, be it fruits or vehicles, according to their interest. So by 1.5 of age, what we expect is that the child knows the common objects around them or the objects that we are going to make it an activity. So whatever your child knows, quickly draw it into a paper. Start. It's a process. So start by teaching them, introducing them to the objects and teach them to match the picture to that of a real life object. So if you have a picture of a banana, then match it to that of an object, which is the banana. So here, what skill are you looking into? We see if there is appropriate memory, 
Uh, do they have association skills? What is their vocabulary? Are they able to name? If it's a one-year-old child, is he or she able to name the particular word, be it the fruits or uh, vegetables, whatever it is? And is there a sitting tolerance? So is your child able to sit for the activity? And the red flags will be if he's not able to sit for an activity or if he's not able to associate the picture to that of an object, he's not able to engage in a play activity with you. These are all necessary red flags that you can see. The second activity is to do with sorting. So why kitchen vegetable? Because most of the parents say, you know, when I'm in the kitchen, I don't know what to make the child do. So I can't give attention to them. I don't know if he's listening to me or, you know, what is he, he doing? So for a kitchen activity, you can have two baskets. You can help them sort, maybe a vegetable in one, fruits in one. And every activity I discuss here has to start with a bit of teaching. So you need to make sure that your child already knows what is a vegetable or a fruit. If he doesn't know that by age of one and a half or two, it necessarily means a red flag. So start by teaching them that this is how you sort the vegetables. This is how you start the fruits. So here, what do you need to give attention to? You need to see if they know the colors. If, you, if they don't know, are they naming it? Uh, is there a one word utterance if it's a one year old? Is there a two word utterance if it's a two year old? Do they know the colors? And also the red flags, like I said in the first activity, is there a sitting tolerance? Is he able to sit for more than a minute? Is he able to do that? So this is all the red flags that you can notice throughout the activities. The common ones are, is he responding to a name call? Like if you call your child's name and say, you know, pick up the vegetable, put it into the basket. Is he doing that? Is there any response? The third activity is book reading. It's a very important activity because most of the parents say, I'm waiting until the child learns to read. But that necessarily is not the case. So by even one year of age, you can introduce books to the child. Not necessarily read out the books, but you can introduce books. They can point, they can look at the colorful pictures. This is also a development for their sensory. And one thing you can do for a one-year-old is that you can introduce or label the objects that they see in the picture. Necessarily not a storybook, but a picture book. So, and the skills that we are looking at here, are they giving you eye contact? And is there a joint attention? So when you label or when you comment on a particular object, is there a smile from the baby? Or is the baby looking at you when you're saying something? The, all of these are responses that we're looking for. But if it's a bit elder child, then what we go for is a storybook reading. So mostly to do with introducing the characters. So if there is animals in the book, then introduce your characters first. Then tell them what they're doing. Describe more. So all of these cases, one thing you need to note is, is there an attention that the child is giving you? Is there an eye contact? Uh, is he responsive? Is he even um, attending to a name? If you call out for a name, say any of the particular object, is he pointing towards it based on the age of the child? So if any of these is not, not there, this is also considered a red flag. The fourth activity is something you can do in your day-to-day -day routine. So most of us feel we need to have a toy. We need to sit with them for half an hour. Not necessarily. Whenever you are engaging in a daily life activity, like putting clothes in a washing machine, be it organizing materials in your house, anything you do, involve your child into it. But depending on the age of the child, you simplify the activity. So if it's a very little kid, what you say is helping. They can put in the clothes to the washing machine. So when they do these particular activities, describe it for them. Tell them what they're doing. Start labeling it. So things what we're looking at here is are they following the command? So if you ask them to put the book by that side or give me this particular thing, put it inside the machine, are they able to do it? Are they able to follow the commands? Is there an eye-hand coordination? All of these things can be observed during this activity. Now, during this, we can also look for an eye contact from the child. Similarly, a name call too. Are they responding to it? The fifth activity is where you can uh, scatter all his favorite toys, maybe um, fruits, it can be objects or a play item. And you can ask them to collect and put it into a basket. So all of this starts with learning. You show them how to do it and then you give them a command. So are they able to fulfill the command? Is there a fine motor development happening here? So when you say pick up the ball and put it in the basket, is he able to identify that that is the ball? That is object ident identification for you. So if he's able to do all of this, then there are no red flags to worry for. But if he's unable to do it, then what we need to see here is a red flag. 
Now, all these fire activities can be molded with your child. So like I said, be it vegetable sorting or be it any of the other activities, according to the interest of your child, mold the activity. Now, what is more important is that you at all times maintain a communication with your child. So even if the child is playing or even if he's not paying any attention, it's important to communicate with your child. Now, like I said, it's not important how long do you play or what toy are you using for your child? Is it a very nice toy? That doesn't matter. What matters is quality time with them, maybe while putting them to sleep or while feeding. That's the most crucial time for a parent and a child to interact or engage in any kind of activity. Now, what we saw till here are the red flags on general. Now, what are the speech related red flags that we need to be aware of? The first starting with a phonological disorder or a speech sound disorder. So, what is this? For example, a child is having a difficulty to produce a particular sound. So it can be any of the sounds, say for plate, he says plate, or for school, he says soul. And if you see generally, a child is trying to simplify the word. So when consonants come together, maybe P, L are consonants. And when they come together, it's difficult for him or her to produce the same word. So they simplify the word. So generally, we say we have, these are phonological processes that has to diminish with age. Say by three years of age, certain processes diminishes by four certain others. So I'm not asking you to point out to what, uh, what is their issue, but certainly you can identify red flag if you feel there is a clarity issue in your child, uh, maybe in a school environment, maybe in your day-to-day -day conversations. If you feel there is a difficulty in producing certain words, then you need to take a professional help. The second is for stuttering. Like most of you would have heard, is he or she unable to start a word? That's what we have to see. So for example, if it's the word block, is there a difficulty in saying it? Maybe it's like block, or is she repeating a word multiple times? Maybe a part of a word or a sound. So for example, for the word repeat, is he or she say repeat? All of these can be seen as a red flag for stuttering. The third is, are they prolonging a word? So if he or she has to say, please, He's saying please instead of please. So these are difficulties children face, but yet we say maybe it will get okay with time or we say let's wait for a few more months and see. Now other things that what we see in children are prolonged change of voice. We might not observe this because most of the children have engaged in shouting or maybe they um, speak in a very loud voice or they're playing all the time. Maybe your television is running and they want to you know, overpower the television. So in some cases, we also see children have a change of voice. So these are few things that you need to keep in your mind and make sure that at every stage, there is no such red flags in your child, maybe at a school or in a house environment. And there can also be children who have difficulty in understanding simple commands. So all of these speech or language deficient children, if any, need to be identified and also managed at a very early stage. Only if you identify it at an early stage can we resolve it at an early stage. So when you see early identification plays a very important role because that helps us give a better outcome. The smaller the child, easier to teach them. Now, all these red flags can be alarming at times. But what we need to see over here is that we have certain uh, eminent popular personalities too who have had disabilities or disorders in their childhood, but they were successful successful in the means of overcoming and also managing them. So the first, maybe everyone would have uh, heard about this celebrity. We can say Stephen Spielberg. So most of you would know he has made amazing movies, but what did he have? He also had learning issues, dyslexia. So entire of his school time went into bullying and he was not able to learn like others, but that did not stop him from being an excellent filmmaker. Similar is the case of uh, Daniel Radcliffe. We would have seen Harry Potter series and most of our children would be fans of it. But what did he have? He had dyspraxia. And dyspraxia means slight motor deficits where he's not able to do fine motor activities, maybe tying a shoelace or certain uh, little activities which needs help. But he was able to give amazing performances. The next we see are two personalities from India, that is Abhishek Bachchan and Hrithik Roshan, 
one with dyslexia and one with stammering. In both these cases, their speech-related issues did not stop them from delivering dialogues or giving impeccable movie performances. So all of these celebrities is not just to tell you that, you know, there will be an ability in a child, but also to give a hope that even if they do not perform in a particular activity or they do not have a particular talent, they might be good at something else. All we need to do is explore and see what they are good at and further help them nurture it. So, in all of these processes, we forget one particular thing, that we are in a very new generation where phones, tablets, technology, all of it is increasing. So as a parent, what we need to keep watches, is your child using a lot of screen time? Are they exposed to screen for a very long period of time? So what happens is we think the child is good at a phone, they're good at gadgets, and it's kind of an achievement for us. But actually, we don't give attention to what necessarily is a neglect, that is, what is affecting them from a video or from, say, screen time. So research suggests less than two-year-old, if they're exposed to a long screen time, there might be a change in behavior, which can be sudden, which can be growing. And also, most of the parents say that after a lot of screen time exposure, their child, whatever he was speaking, that also he has forgot. So there might be a regression, maybe a delay in speaking. All of this is what a parent or a teacher who has a concern is telling us. Now, what you're going to see is a video on virtual autism. So it might not be a familiar topic. So please do watch carefully. Hello, this is Varsha Sharad. I'm a speech language pathologist at Lorem. So today we're going to see about virtual autism. Uh, which is very much common considering the ongoing pandemic and our current lifestyles. So what exactly is virtual autism? We see a lot of children who have similar symptoms that of children with autism. And mostly this is due to their excessive screen time exposure. Excessive here means like more than two to three hours of screen time exposure and screen time. So generally parents who are not able to manage their child end up giving a lot of telephones or say phones, gadgets, YouTubes, they're being more exposed to media nowadays. So a lot of children just learn the way how in media people speak or the cartoons speak and try imitating them. In most cases, what we see is they have a lot of similarities that of kids with autism. But one difference is that as soon as these gadgets are being removed from their daily life, or if the environmental conditions are being changed by the parent, we see a change in the behavior of the child. The child's behavior changes drastically. And we also see that when we work or give them extra therapy to them, they are better. And children, after being exposed to a long screen time exposure for, for a long uh, period of months, what happens is they no longer relate to what's happening around them. Second thing is they might repeat words or rhymes, whatever it is, but they don't know how to use it in a real life situation. So when they're asked a question or when they have to communicate with someone of their own age group, they do not know how to do it. It's mostly because all of this is a one way communication. So a child sees the media or, or any program, but they're not expected to reply or even respond to the such things. But in a social situation, when a parent is speaking or anyone else is speaking, they expect a response or a reaction, but the child doesn't know how to do it. So here, we also see most of the children have some behavioral issues. So it can be crying or them, them becoming very aggressive. All of this is because they do not know how to communicate their needs or wants. So they think by crying or showing aggression, they can get the attention of parents or the parents will understand them. And most of these things, what we can see is when a child below the age of two years is being exposed to, say, uh, YouTube or, or phone for a long period of time, they end up affecting their normal neuronal development, causing delays in social, cognition, and speech-related areas. So what are behaviors we can see? We can see that they no longer maintain an eye contact or they do not respond to name call. In most cases, there's a delay in speech, and they show abnormal behaviors. So all of this causes a concern to the parents. Now, as parents, what can you do? The first thing is to stop 
the usage of media time or phones just remove it from their daily lifestyle the second thing is to contact a professional be it a speech language pathologist or occupational therapist or a child psychologist and get a overall assessment done so after the assessment we can start a early intervention so in early intervention we have seen the remarkable progress not only in their speech but also in their overall behavioral development so what can parents do about this the first thing is to not give gadgets to the children at a very younger age say for 2 years of age or if you have already given then we need to remove such gadget or applications any any such media exposure to the child as early as possible from the child the second thing is to visit a professional be it a speech language pathologist or occupational therapist or a child psychologist and get a overall assessment done so here early identification and intervention has shown a remarkable change in the child's life be it their normal development or speech and language development so that's the best thing you can do for your child thank you So what we saw here is about virtual autism. Virtual autism is a terminology that we need to pay attention to, and with a high priority that way. So coming to uh, coming with an end to the first session, we'll move on to the next. Now we're going to see a wonderful session by Dr. Nareesh Babu, a senior occupational therapist and a child expert at Lorem Wellness. So he's into a lot of social philanthropic activities and associating with many NGOs like Petal Globe Foundations. Thank you, Varsha. Good evening to all. Thank you for connecting with us uh, at your precious evening. Um, my topic is actually on uh, self-regulation. <laughs> So most importantly, we are now going to see about what are self-regulation skills. So self-regulation is the ability to manage our emotions and behavior, mainly for the child when they get overwhelmed or upset. Mainly, many children used to have the uh, sense of failure. We also learn from the failures. So that time, how we handle our emotions that is most important for us. So self-regulation skills, uh, actually it is a, a form of uh, managing our emotions in a very uh, controlled manner. It has to be developed from the beginning. So most importantly, like Michigan State University has done a research on uh, children from uh, primary to second grade. They have stated and found a, a result that many children could develop self-regulation skills earlier uh, or uh, very prior to their uh, getting into the uh, school, they can have a better self or uh, literacy skills and language developing skills. And also they can able to manage both social communication and language and cognitive skills. So this has been uh, done that research by the Michigan State University. So it's a major like uh, this uh, self-regulation skills are more important for any children, not only for the children and also for the parents, how to manage their challenging behavior when they get uh, kind of out of control or a challenging behavior when they face. So most importantly, the self-regulation skill starts uh, at the infant's level itself. Uh, the, child, uh, the kids used to have self-regulation is the major self-regulation is the sleep. So uh, we can, you might have heard of sleep is the major self-regulation from 12 to 16 years a child has to sleep, the brain development uh, has a better improvement. So this always happens with the child. Many other children have their own way of self-regulating, like shaking their hands, shaking their legs, shaking the, uh, any kind of objects with a hand and many kind of pacifiers they use. And even the parents used to pat them and rocking them. So these are some of the self-regulation skills even many children know how to handle themselves during their stress or in the upset. But these self-regulation skills, many times it is socially appropriate and many times it is inappropriate social behaviors. So that time we have to incorporate some of the self-regulation skills, how they can able to manage so that it is socially appropriate by the others. Kindly please mute, uh, mute yourself so that I can able to talk about 
the particular skills. So learning, actually, the self-regulation skill learning occurs mainly as a brain-based skill. And it develops in the children over time and mainly with the practice. So without practice, it won't develop. So as a parent and a child interaction uh, develops, the self-regulation skills we can improvise. It's mostly of a emotional self-regulation or emotional liability of the child. So major self-regulation difficulties, usually we can see many uh, children with young, uh, young children having an anxious or anxiety uh, 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 conditions when they face some kind of a uh, real face problems in the school or in the home environment or in the other social places. So the pro-social behaviors like sharing, turn-taking and caring or uh, sacrificing for others, maintaining the social um, or a, a relationship with friends, it might be difficulty in some disorders like specific learning disorders and attention deficit hyperactive disorders and even any sensory processing difficulty disorders. So these things which we can easily identify earlier, then we can rectify these uh, conditions and we can able to make the children to be cope up with the society or with the community. The children majorly lack self-regulation skills and it will be having an impact on social, emotional, behavioral, and also in the cultural academic challenge. Tell about how the hierarchy forms in social, emotional, behavioral, and academic challenges. So majorly that uh, many children, uh, many parents used to have a kind of a, uh, strategies using a medication or a punishment or any negative, uh, negative way of treatment will not decrease the challenging behavior. It might arrest at that moment, but it never able to uh, so never able to uh, manage the stress for a longer period of time. So we need to uh, address this particular uh, challenging behavior, not only by medication or punishment, which never going to give any fruitful uh, way of handling the child, only by addressing using a kind of a strategies or a self-regulation strategies will help them to identify and address this issues at the earlier can able to manage for better outcome. So most importantly, the parent or a teacher or a caregiver or all have to choose a kind of a positive role model, which we usually call as a positive based behavior or a positive behavioral role which is more needed for these children to self-regulate themselves. And it can be done through guidance, feedback, and loving support of yours. So you can help the children by removing unnecessary demands. Uh, you can't go with their deal or demands of them. And you can guide them with their loving support. That is most important for these children. Children who can cope up with the stress, anger, disappointment, and frustration are more able to do well in the school and also at the home and can able to make friends and manage the relationship at the most. So this most important, the self-regulation skill is the life essential skill for the, any kid. And this will be like uh, when they get meltdown or any kind of a failure, lose and uh, win game, can able to improvise this self-regulation skill. Usually as an occupational therapist, we used to have a kind of a play, like a tug and war type of a play, lose and win games like for an example, freezing dance or a orchestra or a music uh, musical uh, play, these kind of uh, play behaviors, which makes them to have an awareness of body movements and also develop their self-regulation patterns. So the majorly self-regulation skill that needs to be supported in the children because it is a key overall success and happiness for the children. So uh, unless until the self-regulation skills not developed at the earlier, we can't see much more progress or success, even though they have some other limitations or any other uh, uh, deficits, but still we can able to cope up with them if they can able to regulate their own emotions and behavior at the particular overwhelming time. So this is a pyramid of learning, which we usually the most of the theories of learning occurred with this particular pyramid given by William, uh, Dr. William and uh, Skidberg. So this particular uh, of learning, the most regulation happens as a 
on the consider and proprioceptive all has to be merged and has to be strengthened so if it is not strengthened the sensory motor development have a issues like sensory motor development is nothing but a fine motor and a gross motor developments and the further higher learning happens at the perceptual motor development and leads to the cognitive intellect which is the scholastic skills like learning skills and daily living skills mostly we see the behavior which is deficit are the daily living skills and this is not, uh, nothing but an alert program given in a book uh, as a how, how your engine run so this particular self regulation skills occurs at this particular hierarchy levels so this is given by this particular model we have a lot of other models like i love model um, handwriting model and many other models which can describe about the behaviors but still this pyramid of learning model is best for handling the self regulation skills so now we we are going to have a strategies how we can develop this self regulation skills using a kind of a strategy called pride skills so pride skills is nothing but having an abbreviation of praise reflection imitation and describing behavior and an enthusiasm or an enjoyment by the parents so pride skill is a kind of a parent child interaction program so this particular parent child interaction model having a two types like which is a do rules and a don't rules so pride is a pride is a kind of a do rules so don't rules which also i will talk about it but still do rules are most important how you can able to incorporate it your child even at the home so it is not only actually related to parent child interaction even the teacher child interaction also can be developed by this using this popular tool called pride and this nothing but an acronym you can able to see so i'll be explaining it with an tabular column so there is a pride column and a justification and reasoning and an examples so praise appropriate behaviors of your child is the first pride skill where praise behaviors you want to see mostly from your child always good to use a specific or a focused praising because it has to be mostly sometimes labeled praising or unlabeled praising because labeled praising is that what the child really doing you are going to explain to the child or unlabeled like even just praise it by saying a good you have done a very good, great job so actually what it does is this will enhance a desired behavior and let the child let the child know what behaviors you want and to see more from him so it can happen only by having a idea with antecedents and consequences so we have an example about praise behavior which is i like the way you are sitting so quietly or a great job you have done uh, that hands to yourself and second you can say that the thank you for sharing those toys with me so you are explaining the pattern what the child is doing and labeling it what really it does so that is more important for praising so that the self esteem level of the child can be improvised then second pride skill is reflect appropriate behavior it is nothing but a repeat or a paraphrasing of a, what the child is doing or what the child has said to the parents so repeating the talk and you want to hear from more from the child so that you can encourage the child uh, to do that same and you are connected with the child so this will increase the verbal communication and also you are that you are attending to the child that the child will get a confidence so you can say that the child might be saying that i made a drawing you can say that oh you have made a drawing so this kind of a words makes them to improvise and you can have that self regulation pattern going on the third one is imitate appropriate behavior or imitate um, appropriate way the child is explaining to you so that imitating the, the same what the child is doing is better the child is connected with so it shows that you are playing with the child and uh, the child is also playing with you that bonding can develop and if the child is doing you can also have a talk about in verbal manner fourth thing is a describe appropriate behavior it is verbally describing what you are doing it and mostly this description of uh, appropriate behavior is most needed for the child your child connections so when you are allows the child to lead the play or shows the child you are interested you want to play along with and holds the child's attention and it is good to describe what child is doing so it's mostly of a labeled way of 
describing what child is doing. You, for an example, you are building a house with blocks and you have drawn a rainbow. So this kind of a words encourage a child what he is doing. And when he does it, you are just praising it and connecting with the child. And how timingly you are does, that makes a more impact for the child. Then last for the pride skill is enthusiasm, how enthusiastic you are and how enjoying with your child, that how words you are, what kind of words, positive words you are using with the child, that makes the child more connected with and it gives us positive attention for the child. Mostly we say that joint attention and it, sometimes you can model appropriate positive emotions to the child, how you are expressing it. For an example, this is such a fun game. That's a great, you have done a good job. So these kind of words makes them to have connected and these strategies can be able to most regulate the emotional regulations. So most importantly, the bright uh, behavior skills or behaviors which are influenced by two concepts, which is antecedents and consequences. Antecedents is nothing but what it comes before and consequences is what happens after between the behaviors. So always we have to remember when we are using any kind of a behavioral strategies, this particular antecedents and consequences has to be uh, taken into and that particular place has to be measured. So these are the, for an example, how you are giving instructions when it in antecedents, when you identify the antecedents, like when the child is in a very negative mood, then you have to, uh, you can't give a comment to the child because that uh, the session will not go well. And if it is in a good mood, whatever you say, and the child was ready to follow the command, and you can shape the behavior in that particular mood. So this is more important for the judging antecedents and consequences for a good behavior or a positive behavior to happen. Then we have a don't rules, which is know your child don't rules. The most importantly, I used to say that uh, never use any commands, no questions, no criticism to the child and always try to ignore the bad behavior and address the good behavior. So here are some of the examples I like to explain, which is actively, uh, the tips is actively ignore inappropriate behavior, which results in decreases the bad behaviors and helps child notice the differences in your response and makes a good behavior and the bad behavior to be decreased. So this, for an example, like when you are explaining an appropriate behavior to the child, like I hate picking up your toys. So that makes the child not to do that particular activity. And sometimes he will come up to us. So this always you have to put it up in a better way. Like I love how you are picking up all of your toys and putting them in way. So actually you are expecting the child to do it, but you tell it in a very requesting and praising manner. So better ignore inappropriate behavior when he does it. Even if he throws any kind of a toys or anything on you, you simply wait for a moment when the child approaches to you, that time you have to shape the behavior that you can model it and make the child to uh, do the same what you want to expect from the child. But always when he does good thing, then praise it. So that is most important in uh, appropriate behavior or you can use that pride skill. The second one is avoid getting commands. So ne never, never give any commands or any uh, uh, threatened commands to the child. Never ask them to do any um, way of uh, controlling them or ordering them. So because it always results in increasing the compliance, doesn't allow the child to lead, can cause unpleasantness. So imitate appropriate behavior for the child instead of saying, uh, uh, you're sitting, can you be able to sit? You can ask request to the child instead of making the commands or an order to the child that is best for them and always try to praise it in between. Avoid asking questions. Many commands are actually needs answer. Many of the time the child doesn't want to give answers. They want to do it, do it on their own way. So always try to avoid make, asking questions. Always try to give a choices or some kind of a options to the child or only two options to the child so that what answers you are expecting that can be delivered to you and the communication develops. So it actually may seem like you aren't listening and don't understand the child or disagree something with the child you said. So when you ask questions, it makes them a confusion that you are not connected with the child. Always use the second pride skill, which is a reflect appropriate talk. So makes uh, commands or the statements very clear to the child. 
avoid criticizing the child that is most important don't even compare any child with other child that is also more important so avoid criticizing is uh, like doesn't help never help it to reduce any negative behaviors can increase the bad behavior and may create an unpleasant interactions so always try to use a positive behavior or a positive way of commanding or positive way of statement to the child instead of telling them like what not to do tell them what to do that is most important and praise appropriate behavior and also using that enthusiastic or enjoyment pride skill that is best in this avoiding criticism like how uh, i like how you are using your indoor voice or you can get the uh, ability or the talents you can praise it at that moment that is best for the child as an occupational therapist we use a kind of a uh, standardized uh, self regulation pattern which is uh, already researched pattern which is called zones of regulation and uh, there are many techniques and strategies we use to have uh, in our um, settings like in sessions as well as in the home as well as in the school so anybody can use this particular chart or the self regulation strategies so that easily manageable and the child have a visual kind of a strategies or visual prompt to regulate themselves and easier they get kind of a reward of uh, giving a stars or any kind of a, a smiley to them so know your child program will actually have a future se special session on this uh, we'll be ha having it in very detail soon but i will like to give an a glimpse about the zones of regulation it's nothing but having a four colors which starts from green zone yellow zone and blue zone and red zone red zone is the most dangerous zone we can't enter into the child we have to make self assurance and wait for the child to settle down and we can't make any commands criticize or any kind of a, uh, inter intervene in, in this particular red zone we have to wait for the child to regulate themselves and then when the child approaches to us then we can move it to the yellow zone and then to the blue zone a blue zone and yellow zone is a little bit of a learning pattern where in a green zone the child can able to learn very nicely and you whatever you want to put into your child and make a fun play with the child that session will goes much better and the learning process also happens more and the bonding bonding between the parent child or the teacher's ch child can be created much easier and whatever in uh, the anxious skills or anxious moments can be destroyed but in red zone it's very difficult because temper tantrums or any any kind of a angry moment then we have to wait for the child to regulate and move on to the yellow zone we have some kind of a strategies to move for the from the red zone to the yellow zone we use a lot of other different visual prompts and strategies and favorite uh, games for the child so that he will distracted from that particular moment and able to handle it in a better but usually the self regulation skill uh, happens at this particular chart even we have a different kind of thing like lose and win game is the best way to develop that uh, way of uh, handling their emotions and control because any time anybody can feel the frust uh, stress and the failure because even the child doesn't get uh, along with the other child if he took his pencil or if he took his own properties that time they feel that it is my own possession as they have taken it and it's uh, it's an uh, inappropriate way they will try to grab it from the other child that has to be uh, regulated like he can go and request that it is my possession can you able to give it me where even you can use it and share it i i will definitely share it with you so these kind of emotional regulation makes a more relationship and maintain the more friendship with the child that is more important why we are sending the child to the school so this is my uh, self regulation topic and the pride skills and techniques thank you I would like to invite Dr. Jinsi, ma'am, uh, for her next session on her fitness and maintaining the um, groin pain and other wellness activities. She will be explaining it. Thank you. Thank you, Naris, sir, and good evening, all. Now we are till now we see about the brain and its functions. Now we are going to. see about some physical conditions that can see in children and we need to observe during the growing phase of the children and we are going to discuss about some conditions so we'll see the first condition that is about the pediatric physiotherapy first condition is scoliosis scoliosis is the sideway curvature of the spine here we can see that this 
there is a sideway bending of the spine that can leads to uneven shoulder and shoulder blade appears more prominent in one side than the other and the uneven waist and one higher one hip is higher than the other and the rib cage is prominent in the one side and there is a bending forward posture can be seen this is seen in the early stage of the life and also in the adolescent period so we need to observe this in the children during the growing phase and we can give exercises for this and we can also give the strengthening and stretching exercises and braces is also effective for treating this condition so we need to observe these things while the growing phase of the children so these are some exercises which we can give for the children and see lying down exercises are there that help to stretch and strengthen the body and this is a strengthening exercises to strengthen the spine and the muscles related to the spine next condition is called kyphosis kyphosis is front to back curve of the upper spine here you can see a child picture here there is a forward bending can be seen in the back and this is an exaggerated forward rounding of the back and difference in the shoulder height can be seen the head bends forward compared to the rest of the body and difference in the shoulder blade height or position and upper back looks higher than the normal when the child bend forward and tight muscles of the back and also leg muscles can be seen in this condition so normally this occurs due to carrying heavy backpacks that is a major threat for the child and that can cause kyphosis and another is due to stooping posture that the child adopted during their early lifetime this can leads to kyphosis like condition here also the treatment is mainly exercises exercises to strengthen the back muscles and also for stretching the front muscles and we can also use as the braces for preventing this condition and prevent the further progression of this condition next is low back pain low back pain is not seen only in adults it can also see in children because it low, it affecting the lower portion of the spine the common cause is improper lifting and poor posture and lack of regular exercises and due to muscle strain muscle strain can occur due to prolonged sitting posture that adopted during the schooling these are some exercises that help to stretching the muscles that can stretch the low we have to stretch the lower limb then we have to also stretch the upper upper limb and lower limb then cat and camel exercises this all exercises that will help to strengthen our back muscles and also give relaxation see these are also the exercises we have to tilt the pelvics then some extension exercises for the back and curling exercises for the back and side plank and muscle stretching this exercises we can continue and this regular exercises help to prevent the back pain it's good for both adults and children next problem is neck pain so muscle strain in the neck due to rough play or looking down for an extended period of time in the phone and computer and the position of the laptop and the eye level can also can leads to this neck pain we can do some exercises to strengthen the neck muscles i will show some exercises first we can place our hand like this okay and press our head on the hand and keep hold for 10 second and just keep it in the back hand keep in the back and press and hold for 10 seconds like this sideways also we can keep our hand and press our head on the hand for 10 second we can repeat this exercises for 10 times this exercises help to strengthen our neck muscles and during while sitting for a prolonged duration of during that time we can do the neck movements and stretching of the muscles so we can do the forward movements backward movements and sideway movement of the neck that will help to relax our muscles 
and also help to prevent stress in the muscles. This is the, some stretching exercises to the muscles. And it is, along with the neck muscles, we have to strengthen our arm muscles also. Next is trigger finger. Trigger finger is a condition which one of your finger gets stuck or bent position. That is keeping in the bent position. That commonly seen in the ring finger and also in the thumb. If you see in the thumb, that is called the trigger thumb. So trigger thumb causes difficulty to the child to hold the pen or pencil. So this condition where the expert support is needed and it should be treated as in the early stage itself. Sometimes exercises will help to prevent this condition and also rest and some support like splinting can help to prevent the condition. In some cases, it needs surgery to change this condition. Next is Hals valgus. Hals valgus is the bending of the big toe. This can be seen those who are using the pointed shoes. In schools, normally the students commonly use shoes. So there is chance of getting this condition. And there is chance of getting pain and infection in the side of the big toe. We have to treat this condition as early as possible. And we have to observe our children's leg because this condition is common, commonly seen in children. And we can do shoe modification and strap like uh, shoes or chapels can be used to prevent this condition. And we can give some exercises to the small muscles of the foot. This all will help to prevent this condition. Next, growing pain. We all heard about the growing pain. During the growth period, there may be pain occurs in the leg and other part of the body, but all pain is not growing pain because some pain occurs due to the muscle inflammation or due to the bone inflammations and all. So we have to take care of this condition. We cannot avoid all the pain as growing pain. So hope you understand about these conditions. And now I will call Dr. Varsha to continue this section. So this brings us to the end of our session. Moving on, let's see a quick recap of whatever you've seen till now. So starting from why focusing on a particular age group to why early years are important. And also we saw why is brain important? Why do we know, uh, we are, why do we need to know about the brain? What is the power of brain? So these are few things that we covered. So knowing your brain better, the parts of brain, multiple intelligences, and how can we connect with environment? So we saw eight multiple intelligence and how that can be connected to our surroundings, to our kids, how do we use it? We also saw about the different modes of learning, why each child is unique and each child requires a different mode of learning to learn better. Moving on, we also saw about the talents and red flags generally that are used uh, to identify what is the difficulty of your child. Mode of focus was also given on how to spend a quality time with your child. And then we had a session by Dr. Naresh Babu on how pyramids of learning is important, self-regulation tips, pride skills. Then the last session that we saw was of pediatric physiotherapy. So this is all about the session to know your child better. So we have a Google form in our chat box, which you can fill in for the feedback. And in case of any questions, please do uh, put it up in the chat box. We'll be moving on to a Q&A sessions. So before that, we will play a video. So by this time, you can put in all of the questions. Any questions or queries on any of the topics we have covered, or generally, if you have any questions to address to the speech or regarding occupation or a general learning for your children, you can put it up that in the chat box. Welcome all. I'm Dr. Naresh, occupational therapist. Today we are going to talk about handwriting without tears. It is a licensed program as even though after doing occupational therapy program, we need to do a module on handwriting without tears. It has level one and level two advanced programs. In handwriting without tears program, 
we are going to have a solutions for many children who have a illegibility in writing this might be coincides with autism de developmental coordination disorders adhd and other dyspraxic children also have this illegibility in handwriting the speed of writing can be measured by using a protocol called handwriting protocol given by mcmaster's university and they are continuously developing these manuals for increasing the productivity of the children in handwriting without tears program the strategies is to have good directionality and which was already been programmed by zanner bolster and other denilian programs but still the directionality with a smile of using this kind of a directions program with a smile of a little slate board can improvise this children's difficulties in writing most of the children with specific learning difficulties have issues in mirror way of mirror way of writing or mirror images this can be rectified with which is otherwise called reversals can be rectified by providing an handwriting without tears kit so these are the wood pieces where we can make different alphabets with the directions and having a kinesthetic and proprioceptive input the children can able to make better handwriting and provide an expression of thoughts of writing skills can be improvised majorly this handwriting without tear program is a two weeks program given by jan alsons and now it has been widely improvised in many schools by uh, distributors and many other handwriting without tears practitioners mostly this practitioners are occupational therapists who having an experience in identifying these children and providing these services now we are going to see these kits in a little while what are the pieces how we can make this reversals can be rectified in these children many other handwriting programs they used to have big strokes and little strokes but in handwriting with the tear program they used to have bigger line and a small line and bigger curve and a smaller curve this particular curve wood pieces can be utilized to strengthen the directionality of writing capital letters as well as small letters here we will see how we are having an rectifying of issues of small letter and also by providing the big letters once a child started doing with visual learning process easily can able to identify the tracing with the wood pieces of both alphabetical capital as well as the small letters here many children used to do reversal and that might change the pattern of the letters and many time it has been misunderstood like p can be reversed so these kind of reversals makes illegibility in the handwriting and also sometimes the letters been misunderstood and their expression of thoughts can be limited in doing this so this particular mistakes or issues can be rectified by providing the visual input to the child and can easily rectify by making them to correct those particular patterns of letters and this will not have an same effect on the carbon paper that's why we also use the slate to do the directionality on the slate of a wooden slate rather than having a plastic slate so this was been strengthened in handwriting with the tears program and many times the reversals and also the legibility can be strengthened by providing this initial way and we also use the play dough uh, mold where we can able to place those mold to have the a different kinesthetic effect and the, those children with sensory issues can be rectified by using both wooden pieces as well as the play dough method and we also have a program called wet and dry method where we take a cotton 
immersed in the water and we also have a chalk piece writing and let the uh, wiping of those particular letters and having a shadow of letters will have a shadow images or a visual images within the child. So those visual images can have a replication of uh, thoughts when they write in a speed and legible manner. So this wet and dry method is coming up with a digitalized one now in iPads and in Android apps where we have a wet and dry apps used for strengthening this legibility program. Thank you. So let's have the Q&A session now. And uh, we have a question uh, for the speech pathologist and uh, she'll be answering that. So I think the first question was how to increase the expressive vocabulary or how to express uh, expressive language. So it depends on the age of the child, the first thing. Second is when they're communicating through gestures mostly, you need to give them opportunity to make it to a verbal level. So in case there's no verbal utterance at all, then the first thing you need to do is to create opportunity. For example, the needs of the child. So why does the child speak? The child speak only if they have a need. So maybe they are hungry or they need water. So what you can do is change the timings of all of these. So make a disorder so that they need to ask for it. So they need to ask for water. Maybe they use a gesture now, but they need to say the word. So how do they say the word? So every time they need water, you first start by telling them, by prompting. Let's say, uh, if you need water, you need to say water. So once you tell that, and if it's a routine for the child, the child picks up the word. So the next thing is to make sure at every time you make it a point to ask the child, what do you need to say? Or give them a clue. What, what are you expecting from the child? So if it's a two word level and the child is not speaking, it's because we are not prompting the child or we are not asking them to extend the utterance. For example, a child says blue car, but doesn't say the car is going but the child doesn't say that, you know, the car is going in speed. So this is the problem. Then what we need to do is we need to explain it to the child. So you're saying in two word utterance, right? So it's blue car. So when we see a car, we say, oh, it's a blue car. Yeah, the blue car is going. So this way we can extend the utterance of a child. So expressive vocabulary can be improved in multiple ways, but depends. What is the problem the child is having? Is it because we're not giving ample of stimulation at home? Or is it because there's some other factor that's causing a delay? So once we know that factor, we'll be able to help them in a better way. So the next question was... Thank you, Varsha. Okay. So we have the next question, but I'm not sure what exactly you, want, or you wanted to ask. So you can unmute yourself and ask me the question. It says the speak words correctly, but can't complete the sentence and use a different slack. So if I get the question right, is it about... He speaks in two words, but can't complete a sentence. Is it that? Or is it like he uses a word, but when it's in a sentence, the clarity reduces. Or it's as if just he's speaking his own language and you're not able to understand. So can you help me find what's the question? Yeah, you can unmute yourself and ask the question. Okay, considering the question is about uh, not using a complete sentence or speaking in its own intonation pattern, like a childlike utterance, what you can do is model for the child. If you expect a word to be said and when it to be said it in a sentence, if he's not using the correct sentence properly, what you can do is start with modeling. So whenever there's a particular sentence, you can say, this is the way it has to be said. For example, if it's like uh, give water, but the child only says water and the rest of it is not clear. Maybe they say water, mm, it's just an utterance. Then what you can do, so you can prompt the child say, you say, give water. Alangi bellam taru, alangi bellam so anything of a prompt is uh, useful for the child. And if it's about the clarity, that he says the word correctly, but at times you're not able to understand what he's saying, then you'll have to uh, seek a professional help to see at what age range and at what words he's having a difficulty. And considering if it's just an accent, maybe your child is exposed to a lot of cartoons or videos that he has picked up the accent, maybe a slang or an accent, so whatever he says is in that particular accent. So he's imitating. Basically, children pick up through imitation and observation. So he is also picked up from a particular, uh, say, video or a cartoon that he's seeing. I hope it answered your question. See, the questions can be in uh, regional languages also. We can answer in Tamil or in Malayalam. 
and even in Hindi. So please uh, raise your questions. Any more questions? Uh, please uh, write in the chat box or you can ask straight. I repeat, it can be in uh, regional languages like Tamil or Malayalam and uh, Hindi also. Uh, hello, ma'am. Yes, hello, ma'am. And the Monopinian same question choice in the three year old honor. Uh, some sari is inappropriate. I tell some sari and other words in a clarity. From other sentence correct title the Paranilla, Vellum, the Varanilla, Vellum, Matra Paranola, Tadun, the Varanilla. Upon a school cartoon, so good the light to Khan and under the moon, I say, educated wear a Palavaku on some sari. Namakadi no Kala Karin or under or assessment to Jia, the either A the situations Lana, a lingle A the words on a Matu Wakina. Pinna A screen type, Yamparnole, Kudal Karna Kutigal, our accent to pick up each. Shall the cartoon only edicus and Sarikina, a lingle are easy care, ending limited edicus and Sarikina. Clarity Illa and Dingil, or three year age, by the Toranganda Samayan, the phonological process, our reduce in the words. Custom title words are simplified. So, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But the sounds are already acquired on the time. I can up a sentence with some sorry clarity. Illa and then a trend better than a professional or a speech therapist in a carnage in the unprofessional in in the one on a delay. Where another other way in the GM button no can I do better. We till Namka GM button a carrier a put up a word parnigay number correct type word paria. I would take the other part of the parana in a very. Our word is correct. We have to say that 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 we have to say Correct either the pressure in the Jana Narayanangi or assessment to Jana Jana. A could take under endana pressure, either sounds lana production difficulty. Other than the therapy start the individual. Apo other no question. And if you got any questions in uh, behavioral issues or something, you can ask uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Naresh Babu is here. Ma'am. Um, excuse me. Yeah, please, please. Um, yeah, hi, good evening, Mr. Sonalia. Um, so I had a, had a question regarding the expressive language for my son. He's six years old. So off late, he started talking when he was 4.5 years old. And then uh, like he's able to make a bit of sentences right now. But um, when it comes to expressive language, sometimes he's not able to express. So his behavior changes, like he gets very aggressive and like something can be done about that. Like. Like because of his express language is delayed, it is kind of he gets very agitated and frustrated, you know, and uh, like he is not in a mood to express. Like he just, you know, like he just don't want to talk, and he's very very aggressive, like at times, you know. So something can be done to control like this behavior, like. Uh, so let me request uh, Dr. Naresh to answer this question. Um, hi, Naresh. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Behavior. We have uh, met in Kohe uh, Medical College. I suppose I am an artist too from KN. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Nice to meet you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I hope you know about it. So, uh, aggressive behavior, what kind of aggressive behavior you see? Is hitting or throwing things? Uh, I cannot say hitting, throwing thing. It's just like, you know, kind of pushing behavior. Like okay. somebody, yeah, like pushing somebody, not ex exactly hitting someone. But just okay. pushing, you know, like like pushing me, like just to express if you that okay. he wants to say something, but he is not able to communicate, you know. So okay. that's how I know, like he wants to do something, wants to say something. So okay. as as a mother, as a therapist, I understand both the ways. Uh, so I explain this person in front of them that he wants to do so and so things. That's why he is uh, agitated or frustrated, you know. So better use the visual strategies that is the most important you can have an options of twice two options and you can use those visual strategies or visual prompts rather than having a, a kind of a, a asking him to do the expression so instead of that he can able to uh, point out or he can able to give the answers in the writings how about his writing 
uh writing is good uh, yeah then you can ask him to express in writing rather than uh, asking him but better have a phone conversation or use any alternative uh, ways uh, where he doesn't have to see the person and uh, speak so that will improvise and you can able to motivate him uh, his self esteem level increases you can see a better uh, way of his uh, behaviors this mostly he needs an attention um like i'll just give an example this typically happens when uh, somebody comes home and they are, the guest is leaving but okay. he don't want to let them go so okay. he is just he is just like out of his control you know so is okay. there something particular behavior i have observed in my son can be okay. something can be done yeah yeah so but you know that no this is a time to end up so you can prepare him by giving a visual prompt that they are going to leave at this particular time the chime scheduling you can show to the, show to him that uh, they are going to move within 5 five minutes or 15 minutes so that preparation skill might reduce his stress that anyway they came uh, for a little while and they are moving out at this person so that's why i said the visual prompting like they came for a particular time at this 8 o'clock or 8:30 they are going to go to their home and next day they might come so this kind of assurance might uh provide him that uh, regulatory behaviors i hope you can understand us yeah yeah okay. Uh, okay thank you narish thank you yeah and uh, one more thing if you can uh, if you want a detailed discussion also you can call us uh you can uh, chat in the I admin mean, in the chat box the number and everything will be given so you can fix up a time and clear your doubts even after this q and a session so now we have questions from uh, miss pinky robin okay, and thank you. Uh, Mary Lakshmi and uh, Miss Anaka. So, uh, the the question from Mary Lakshmi is again. Uh, I mean, Doctor Narish to be answered that. So you can ask that question. The question is like uh, my nine year old son gets easily upset on silly things, and uh, how to change uh, this behavior? Over to Doctor Narish. Okay. He can't accept the failures. Uh, so that is, a, that is the most important thing which we have to develop within the child because lose and win game is most important that we used to say is frustration tolerance. So we have set the goals for the child like what is the level of frustration tolerance. Uh, we used to have a kind of a two way games like a connect four game or uh, any kind of a, 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 a carom board or any kind of a game where they have to follow the rules. So that makes them boring. So losing here, what you actually wants to tell about uh, silly things. I just want to know about what is silly things. He gets upset. Can you able to unmute and tell about that? So that I can get a clear idea. Mary Ma. Uh, sir, uh, uh... Uh, that is actually uh, in classes and all. No, when the um, then the other students say something very small things, if they just uh, say like teasing, uh, small things, okay. he gets very upset and he always complains like uh, they don't like me. They always tease me like this that uh, to only only to me they are doing these things. Uh, nobody else they are doing. So even when I try to make him understand that these are all very silly things, small things, also he is hurt himself. Right. He's okay. sad, uh, uh, like that. He's saying nobody likes me there. Uh, they'll uh, tease me for whatever I do, uh, like that. He's feeling like a, no, uh, they don't accept him in the class. But uh, otherwise, uh, outside he's okay. In, we are staying in flat. He has company here, friends here. Uh, he's okay. But uh, sometimes so that friendly that friendly environment is not happening in uh, the classroom. Then we have to talk to the teacher. Uh -huh. And uh, because teacher actually major, they think uh, that uh, uh, academic skills has, has to be given more importance. Actually, we we are sending our children mainly for getting the social yeah. interaction and friendship. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So you can request her like uh, because he might be selecting some particular group which he likes, but that group might be little over uh, smart, uh, which they might not be accepting him. And he will go and again and again he will approach and he gets a failure. 
Yeah, yeah. The teacher can be able to identify, and she can make make the proper seating uh, in yeah. front of it, and she can. Uh, you can have a later. You can have a when you have a, a parent teachers meeting. You can talk to those childrens uh, which they he is like to approach and make a kind of a, a different way of meeting them. Uh, you can invite them as a tea party or a different place where it is not in the same place of a classroom because classroom uh, friendship. Uh, many times it gets uh, uh, affected because a teacher might punish because he is in, uh, distracting the the child. He is trying to pull the child, and they might both the people get punished or they might get scolded, and the friendship gets uh, break. So this this way we can talk to the uh, teacher mainly, uh, so she can able to provide a lot of support and she can identify what hindering the child can't able to move with it. and the seating seating place like second bench and every time the child, the uh, teacher crosses she can able to do a simple stepping and uh, any time he does any kind of a mischief uh, rather than calling his name uh, better call his friend's name and we have to inform to that uh, 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 friend name like peer group that saying that whenever he does something distracted i will try to uh, get attention from you so that he will get alert so that way of you know, like a indirect way of calling him will make him more emphasize and will have a good friendship like he might feel that teacher called him not me but i have done the something mischief so this way of uh, doing we she can able to develop some kind of friendship so that friendship making most of the teachers say that it will happen automatically but it never happened most of the time uh, uh, it was break uh, broken by the teachers because sometimes they feel that uh, he is going and disturbing and they get bullied so uh, because this child might have a little bit of a self esteem level low and that can be boosted up by the teachers and even not only by the teachers even the helpers and the imrs that is most important because many time the recess time uh needs a lot of regulation so you can talk to the uh, supporting staff and also with the teacher that gives uh, more best way of handling because i know he can able to do better uh, friendship makes uh, sacrifice and making sharing and turn taking in the home and in his comfortable environment but still the classroom still not be a comfortable environment for him to make his own friendships might be uh, is late might be every time he gets uh, Uh, low marks or some some other things. Even if he gets good marks, some people will try to avoid. But he might be a choosy uh, person in the group. That particular group, he might be wanted it, and they are actually uh, not accepting him. So that he can easily make it with the teacher. Teacher has a uh, full support. She can able to modify. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Question is from uh, Anaka, uh, Miss Anaka. and uh, it's regarding again communication and uh, let me hand over to swasha so your 6 year child's language delay finds issue in communicating with friends but within a year has improved a lot in his mother tongue but medium to interactions at uh, school in english i think he finds difficult in copying my question is whether if uh, we compel him to speak in english will it affect his improvement in malayalam we stay in mysore okay so first thing he had a delay and now he's coping up with this delay maybe there was intervention maybe your uh, stimulation has been better from the time you are giving able to give much attention to the child since he is in mysore what we need to focus here is is his school basically in english or is there a, a chance of any other language which is going to come up so one thing we need to focus here is it's not a big deal that we are using three languages and uh, against all the researches it doesn't say simultaneously you're going to uh, give him proper interaction or stimulation in english malayalam it's going to affect but if it's a difficulty if you feel malayalam is a bit difficult or english is a bit difficult you need to slow down so whichever language is easier for him start concentrating on it more and uh, slowly help him transfer it to english maybe uh, because it's what the school needs the only problem here is that maybe the surrounding speak another language there is malayalam and then there is english in school and there is totally another language maybe uh canada somewhere else so here what we can focus is malayalam make it strong for him since it's not uh now we are not into a school phase maybe it's the vacation for the child focus on malayalam slowly you can transfer to english for them so it's okay to use few um carrier nouns or words maybe the name of objects everything in english it's okay do not expect him to just start speaking in sentences but you can focus on words to tell him you know 
this is what it means or this is the name labeling is okay but since he has just started speaking i'm not sure in what word level he is maybe a two word utterance so we can focus just on malayalam slowly transfer him to english that would be a better option for him hope that i answered your question so the next question is uh, it's regarding uh, virtual autism actually it's connected to that and uh, let them sparsha answer that okay so uh, before moving on to the virtual autism question i think you have replied saying he recently started saying when i narrate a story or read a story for him okay ipo 6 vayasai kutike you have asked me to explain in malayalam and malayalam thinu english like transfer cheyano vendiyo nu choichathile malayalathile thanne namakku or base set aaki basic aayittla karyangale expect cheyda madi or englishile or reply allengil or englishile or sentence based answer adu tharum expect cheyanda namakku prompt cheyunu nokka malayalathil cheyida avarku or 2 to 3 word level aavumbo ipo parayunnathu narrate cheyumbo തിരിച്ചു പറയുന്നുണ്ട് അപ്പൊ എത്ര വാക്കിൽ പറയുന്നുണ്ട് ടു വേർഡ് അട്ടറൻസിലാണോ പറയുന്നത് അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ത്രീ വേർഡിലാണോ പറയാൻ ഉദ്ദേശിക്കുന്നത് അങ്ങനെ നമ്മൾ നോക്കേണ്ട ഒരു കാര്യമുണ്ട് പിന്നെ നമ്മൾ ഇവിടെ ചെയ്യേണ്ടത് ആദ്യം അയാൾക്ക് ഇത്രയും ഡിലേ ഉണ്ടെങ്കിൽ നമ്മൾ ആദ്യം ചെയ്യേണ്ടത് ഒരു പ്രൊഫഷണൽ ഹെൽപ്പ് എടുക്കുക ഒരു ഡീറ്റെയിൽ ആയ ഒരു ലാംഗ്വേജ് അസസ്മെന്റ് കഴിയുമ്പോൾ വിൽ നോ വൈ ഇസ് ദയർ എ ഡിലേ ഏത് കാരണം കൊണ്ടാണ് ഡിലേ എന്ന് അറിഞ്ഞു കഴിയുമ്പോൾ വേണം നമ്മൾ മലയാളത്തിലാണോ ഇംഗ്ലീഷിലാണോ ഫോക്കസ് ചെയ്യാൻ നോക്കുക നമുക്ക് എപ്പോഴും നീഡ് ബേസ്ഡ് ആണ് റിക്വയർമെന്റ് എന്താണ് ഇനി വളർന്നു വരുമ്പോൾ മൈസൂരിൽ തന്നെയാണ് അല്ലെങ്കിൽ അവിടുത്തെ ലാംഗ്വേജ് ആണ് അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ഇംഗ്ലീഷ് മാത്രം ഫോക്കസ് ചെയ്താൽ മതിയെങ്കിൽ നമുക്ക് അങ്ങനെ ട്രാൻസ്ഫർ ചെയ്യാൻ ബുദ്ധിമുട്ടില്ല പക്ഷെ ഫസ്റ്റ് വാട്ട് യു നീറ്റ് ഡൂ ഇസ് എ ഡീറ്റെയിൽ സ്പീച്ച് ആൻഡ് ലാംഗ്വേജ് അസസ്മെന്റ് സോ ഐ ഹോപ്പ് ഇറ്റ് ആൻസർ യുവർ ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ ഓക്കെ അടുത്ത ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ നോക്കാം അടുത്ത ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ ചോദിച്ചിരിക്കുന്ന നാല് വയസ്സുള്ള കുട്ടിക്കാണ് ഐ എം ആൻസറിങ് ഇറ്റ് ഇൻ ഇംഗ്ലീഷ് in case you need me to switch the language please let me know so he's 4 years old and he has a speech delay we went for speech therapy and speech is really improved to 4 to 5 word per sentences the reason was not mingling with children okay see at a 4 year old level what we expect is able to narrate the incidents so if he's coming back from a school school in the tirichu varumbo nadana karyangal parayan pattunnundo endengil aavashyangal allengi sugo illa evadengilum idichu idakke or sentence level nammale നമ്മുടെ അടുത്ത് കമ്മ്യൂണിക്കേറ്റ് ചെയ്യാൻ പറ്റുന്നുണ്ടോ ഇതൊക്കെ നോക്കേണ്ട ഒരു കാര്യമാണ് മേ ബി ഹീ സ്പീക്സ് ഫോർ ടു ഫൈവ് ബട്ട് ഓൺലി ഓൺ പ്രോം നമ്മൾ പറയുന്ന റിപ്പീറ്റ് ആണോ ചെയ്യുന്നത് അല്ലെങ്കിൽ സെൽഫ് ആയിട്ട് ഇനീഷ്യേറ്റ് ചെയ്ത് ഒരു ഫോർ ടു ഫൈവ് സെന്റ് ഒരു ഫോർ ടു ഫൈവ് വേർഡ്സിൽ സംസാരിക്കുന്നുണ്ടെങ്കിൽ ഒരു ഡിലേ ഇല്ല പോലെ തോന്നുന്നില്ല പക്ഷെ നമ്മൾ ടാപ്പ് ചെയ്യേണ്ട കാര്യങ്ങൾ ആൾക്ക് ഹ്യൂമർ മനസ്സിലാവുന്നുണ്ടോ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ നമ്മൾ സിവാൻറ്റിക് ഇൻഫ്ലൻസസ് നമ്മൾ പ്രോബോബ്സ് പറയുമ്പോൾ അത് മനസ്സിലാവുന്നുണ്ടോ ഹ്യൂമറിനും റിയാലിറ്റിക്കും ഡിഫറൻസ് മനസ്സിലാവുന്നുണ്ടോ ഇതൊക്കെ ഒരു ഹയർ ലാംഗ്വേജ് സ്കിൽസ് ആണ് വേർഡ്സ് ഫോർ ഓ ഫൈവ് ഉണ്ടെങ്കിലും ചിലപ്പോ ഈ ഹയർ ലാംഗ്വേജ് സ്കിൽസ് മിസ് ഔട്ട് ആവാം ആദ്യം നിങ്ങൾ എടുത്ത സ്പീച്ച് തെറപ്പി സെന്ററിൽ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ അടുത്തൊരു സെന്ററിൽ ഒരു അസസ്മെന്റ് നടത്തുക ഇപ്പൊ ഏത് ലെവലിലാണ് സംസാരിക്കുന്നത് മേ ബി ഹിസ് ഗുഡ് ഒരു ഫോർ ടു ഫൈവ് ലെവലിൽ സംസാരിക്കുന്നത് പക്ഷെ അതർ ആസ്പെക്ട്സ് നറേഷൻ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ആളുടെ ഇൻഫ്ലുൻസ് ചെയ്യുന്ന സ്റ്റൈല് കോംപ്ലക്സ് ആയ കാര്യങ്ങൾ എക്സ്പ്ലെയിൻ ചെയ്യുമ്പോൾ അത് പിടികിട്ടുന്നത് ഇതൊക്കെ ഇമ്പ്രൂവ് ആയിണ്ടോ എന്ന് അറിയാൻ ഒരു സ്പീച്ച് തെറപ്പിസ്റ്റിനെ കണ്ട് അവരുടെ ഒരു അസസ്മെന്റ് നടത്തി കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ നമുക്ക് അറിയാൻ പറ്റും ആളുടെ ലെവൽ അക്കോർഡിംഗ് ടു ഏജ് ആണോ നോമേറ്റീവ് വഴി ആണോ അതോ വി നീഡ് എക്സ്ട്രാ ഹെൽപ്പ് എന്നുള്ളത് സോ ഐ തിങ്ക് ദാറ്റ് വിൽ ഹെൽപ്പ് യു ഹലോ യെസ് യെസ് പ്ലീസ് ഐ ഹാവ് എ ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ ഹൗ ടു ഹാവ് എ കൺട്രോൾ ഓവർ ദ യൂസേജ് ഓഫ് ഗാഡ്ജറ്റ്സ് എക്സാമ്പിൾ മൊബൈൽസ് ആൻഡ് ഫൈൻ 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 യാ എനി കൺട്രോൾ ചെയ്യാൻ എനി മെത്തേഡ് ടു ഹാവ് എ കൺട്രോൾ ഓവർ ദാറ്റ് yeah sure so we'll answer that and uh, one more question was there from pink miss pinky robin and uh, her question was how to change the kid from mobile addict when she didn't uh, get mobile she became angry likewise you replied i mean she asked so both the questions will be answered now so namak adim speech perspective nu yan parayam endakke cheyan pattana pakshi behavioral aayittu varuna prashnam that is that the mobile kittada avumbo aalu frustrate aavu allengi deshapada nendengil endu cheyanana ഡോക്ടർ നരേഷ് ബാബു പറയും പക്ഷെ ആദ്യത്തെ ആസ്പെക്ട് എങ്ങനെ നമുക്ക് കുറച്ച് കൊണ്ടുവരാം മൊബൈൽ യൂസ് ഒരു ഡേ ടു ഡേ ആസ്പെക്ടിൽ നമ്മൾ സഡൻ ആയിട്ട് മൊബൈൽ എടുത്ത് മാറ്റുകയാണെങ്കിൽ അത് ഫ്രസ്ട്രേഷൻ ആവും അപ്പോൾ ഇപ്പോൾ ഒരു മണിക്കൂർ കാണുന്ന സമയം
അല്ലെങ്കിൽ എന്തെങ്കിലും ഒരു റൈംസിലേക്കാണ് ആ റൈംസ് തന്നെ നമ്മൾ പാടിയാലോ ഡിപ്പെൻഡിങ് ഓൺ ദ ഏജ് ഓഫ് യുവർ ചൈൽഡ് റൈംസ് ആണ് കാണുന്നതെങ്കിൽ റൈംസ് നമ്മൾ പാടുക അതേ ഒരു താളത്തില് അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ഗെയിംസിലാണ് അഡിക്റ്റഡ് അല്ലെങ്കിൽ എന്തെങ്കിലും ഒരു കാർട്ടൂണിലാണ് അഡിക്റ്റഡ് എങ്കിൽ ആ കാർട്ടൂണിനെ മാറ്റി നിർത്താനായി നമ്മളൊരു ഇൻട്രസ്റ്റിംഗ് ആയിട്ടുള്ള ടാസ്ക് ഉണ്ട് മേ ബി ഇറ്റ്സ് എ ബുക്ക് റീഡിംഗ് കൂടുതലും പാരന്റ്സ് ചെയ്യാത്തൊരു കാര്യമാണ് നമ്മൾ ബുക്കിലേക്ക് എൻഗേജ് ചെയ്യിപ്പിക്കുന്നത് ഒരു സ്റ്റോറി എടുക്കുക ക്യാരക്ടേഴ്സിനെ ഇൻട്രൊഡ്യൂസ് ചെയ്യുക നമ്മൾ എത്രത്തോളം നമ്മുടെ ഇന്റർനേഷൻ മാറ്റി സംസാരിക്കുന്നു എങ്ങനെ നമ്മൾ അനുഗ്രഹിച്ച് സംസാരിക്കുന്നു സോ വെൻ യു നറേറ്റ് എ സ്റ്റോറി അതിൽ ക്യാരക്ടർ പോലെ വോയിസ് മോഡുലേഷൻ ചെയ്ത് സംസാരിക്കുമ്പോൾ എക്സാജുറേറ്റ് ചെയ്യുമ്പോൾ എക്സ്പ്രഷൻസ് കുട്ടികൾ കൂടുതലും നമ്മളെ നോക്കും വീഡിയോ അല്ലാണ്ട് പിന്നെ വീഡിയോ പതിയെ പതിയെ നമ്മൾ കുറച്ചുകൊണ്ട് വരുമ്പോൾ തന്നെ അവരതിനെ പറ്റി മറന്നോളും വീഡിയോ കോൺസെൻട്രേറ്റ് ചെയ്യാനുള്ള ഒരു മെയിൻ കാരണം അവർക്ക് വേറെ ഒന്നും ചെയ്യാനില്ല കളി തിരിച്ചു തുടങ്ങാം സെയിം ഏജ് കുട്ടികൾ ഉണ്ടെങ്കിൽ അവരെ പ്ലേ ആക്ടിവിറ്റിയിലേക്ക് എൻഗേജ് ചെയ്യാനും പറ്റും അപ്പൊ ഇത്തരം കാര്യങ്ങൾ നമ്മൾ പതുക്കെ ചെയ്തുകൊണ്ട് വരണം ഒരു ഡ്രാസ്റ്റിക് ചേഞ്ച് കൊടുക്കാണ്ട് ഒരു സ്ലോ ഡേ ബൈ ഡേ ബേസിസിൽ നമ്മളിങ്ങനെ അവരെ ഷിഫ്റ്റ് ചെയ്തോണ്ട് വരാം പിന്നെ തീരെ പറ്റുന്നില്ല ഫുഡ് കഴിക്കുമ്പോൾ എന്തായാലും ഗാഡ്ജറ്റ് വേണം വീഡിയോ വേണം അല്ലാണ്ട് പറ്റുന്നില്ല എന്ന് പറയുകയാണെങ്കിൽ കുറയ്ക്കുക ആ സമയം അങ്ങോട്ട് കുറച്ചിട്ട് ആ സമയത്തൊക്കെ നമ്മൾ ഡിസ്ക്രൈബ് ചെയ്യുക എന്താ സംഭവിക്കണം ഇപ്പൊ ഒരു വീഡിയോ ആണ് ഒരു ഷോർട്ട് കാർട്ടൂൺ ആണെങ്കിൽ അതിൽ നമ്മളും ഒരു കോൺവെർസേഷൻ മെയിൻറ്റെയിൻ ചെയ്യാം കൂടുതലും ഈ കുട്ടികൾ വൺ വേ കമ്മ്യൂണിക്കേഷനിലേക്ക് പോവാണ്ട് നോക്കുക അവരെന്താ ചെയ്യുന്ന കാണുന്ന എന്തെങ്കിലും ഒരു വീഡിയോ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ വിഷ്വൽ കണ്ട ഉടനെ അവർക്ക് അത് റെസ്പോണ്ട് ചെയ്യണം അല്ലെങ്കിൽ റിയാക്ട് ചെയ്യണം എന്നൊരു മെന്റാലിറ്റി ഇല്ല അവർ കണ്ടുകൊണ്ടിരിക്കുകയാണ് അത് ബ്രേക്ക് ചെയ്യാൻ നമ്മൾ ഉള്ളിലേക്ക് ഇന്റർഫിയർ ചെയ്ത് എന്ത് സംഭവിക്കണു അതിൽ ആരാണുള്ളത് ഒരു ക്വസ്റ്റൻ ചെയ്യോ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ റെസ്പോൺസ് ഒരു സ്മൈലോ ഒരു ഐ കോണ്ടാക്ട് ബിൽഡ് ചെയ്തെടുക്കുക ഇതിൽ അവരുടെ ആ ഒരു ഒരു വേറെ വേൾഡിലേക്കുള്ള കണക്ഷൻ ബ്രേക്ക് ആവുകയാണ് അല്ലെങ്കിൽ അവർ അവരുടേതായ ഒരു വേൾഡിലുള്ള പോലെ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ അവർക്ക് അവർ പറയുന്നത് മാത്രം കേൾക്കും പക്ഷെ തിരിച്ചു പറയില്ല അങ്ങനത്തെ ചില ബിഹേവിയേഴ്സിനെ നമുക്ക് ബ്രേക്ക് ചെയ്യാൻ പറ്റും സോ വോട്ട് എവർ യു സി ഡിസ്ക്രൈബ് ദറ്റ് പെർട്ടിക്കുലർ തിങ് അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ ചോദിക്കുക എങ്ങനെ ഉണ്ടായിരുന്നു നമ്മൾ ഇതിനു മുമ്പ് ഇത് കണ്ടിട്ടുണ്ടായിരുന്നു ഇങ്ങനത്തെ ഇന്ററാക്ഷൻസ് ഇൻക്ലൂഡ് ചെയ്യുക ഇനി ഇത് ചെയ്യുമ്പോൾ വരുന്ന ബിഹേവിയേഴ്സ് അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ടാൻട്രംസ് എങ്ങനെ മാനേജ് ചെയ്യുക എന്നുള്ളത് ഡോക്ടർ നരേഷ് ബാബു പറയും so most importantly the mobile addiction uh, actually we only create this uh, addiction to the child uh, uh, for an example it is a practical way that uh, when you are seeing any kind of a movie and last climate is happening or even in the cricket when you are taking uh, the mobile or the screen from the child or when we have an electricity cut we also get uh, those kind of upset and angry but here what happens self regulating skill is through the mobile it's more of on screen is the self regulation for the child and we have already practiced it with the child and when we want to wean it out we have to wean it out in a very slow and steady manner and we have to make sure that the child gets the mobile whenever he wants but we have to make it a schedule like uh, when there is a call or important call comes to you and and the child is watching a movie and you want to attend it the child has to know the importance that how how important about the call and he has to come and give it to you so uh, many times what happens we make a trick like we off the uh, internet we sometimes uh, cut the wifi uh, so that the child will uh, will not have a, uh, have a, a chance to see those particular images which he has been seeing continuously and sudden stop makes the child craving for uh, seeing the mobile again and again so this can be reduced by having an assurance given by both the parents that any time the child can able to make it uh most importantly many you people used to put a lock uh, so screen lock and even though uh, um, child are smart and they can able to uh, 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 imitate the pattern and can get out from the lock but still makes a assurance that any time the child ask it they will get it but they, you have to be involved with the child like what actually they are watching it and what they are doing it so if you are placing a time like if you are allowing the child to uh, see a a uh, kind of a, any kind of a screen for a half an hour you also have to engage with your child instead of uh, having a given like a self regulation like they they are having an eating or any other doing and you have a, some other job and you are uh, wanting to sit alone or without doing any other behaviors so that should not be uh, done so majorly you have to schedule and you have to engage with the child and when they do uh, watch some kind of a program and you know about that program you talk about that climax what has happened and you enjoyed it uh, uh, what kind of a characters involved in that particular movie or in the particular screen so that has to be
kind of a videos it's not a new new videos they go for a repetitive videos which they like it they want to see some visuals they want to see some particular depth into it and some symbols or logos so that they want to see again and again to make the imitation of that so that we need to identify what really actually matters for that particular child some children used to watch the car sports or a sports person or a wwf so those kind of fights what actually makes them to watch and you can talk about it so when he is uh, when you are uh, not when he is not aware on the mobile you can talk about that those characters then it will rectify that you are addressing is uh, what he is watching so that makes him to reduce this mobile addiction you can't um, take the mobile from him you can't uh, make uh, make uh, make a kind of a unsurety that he will not get the mobile next time whenever he want he has to crave and he has to grab then only he will get a mobile time so that uh, you have to reduce it that he, the child has to know that he will get it but in a particular time so you finish this you can make it as a reward and that reward making will uh, give you a fruitfulness like if he has read some particular topic and you which you wanted it as a good behavior and once he finished it he will get it as a reward that way you can able to make this strategy so i hope you uh, have answered the question for a mobile addiction because it needs a reassurance therapy uh, because most of the time now we can't reduce the environment everybody is using the mobile the screens are available everywhere and easily they can get it and you can't just restrict your child in your different country like saying that no mobiles are available so we always have to have a reassurance but schedule it in a particular time so hope that question is answered well and uh, if any more questions uh, please raise it and we are almost ending the session and uh, we are waiting for your questions and you can ask in any language that you prefer to and the feedback form is shared already uh, please give your feed feedback so if any more questions left out so shall we wind up the session and let me request ms varsha to conclude the meeting okay so all of today's session is mostly about how to know your child better and how we can uh, cope with certain things or manage things at home i hope it has been useful to you thank you everyone for joining us today we'll have continuing sessions uh, based on topics that have been dealt today in detail if required so thank you for joining us today any queries you can call us contact in the contact given in the chat box thank you thank you everyone for the good sessions thank you mm -hmm.